The opening begins with Black Wheat Brewing's Great Scott Cream Ale. With a name like that, I was expecting something a little bit different color. They describe it as having a deliciously refreshing cream ale smooth body with a slightly hop finish and with just a hint of biscuit nutty flavor. That's not bad. Not quite as malty as I was expecting, but pretty good nonetheless. So the first mail item in says cable. So let's just see if that's what that really is. Is I'll try not to cut through it because that would be bad. It is a cable. Oh, it's just a USB-C to USB-C cable. All right, just a short little charging cable. So I'm assuming I got that to work with this uh, little USB tester, which has USB-C in, and then this USB-C charger that I got a while ago. That is a short cable, so it won't have a lot of losses in it. And it is a thicker cable than your standard charging cable. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah. So hopefully that will be a decent cable for, uh, for testing with this USB tester when I have something that needs testing. USB-C to Type-C charger cable, 3 amp PD, quick, fast charging lead for Samsung, Google, etc., etc. I got the 0.25 meter one. There's a bunch of other ones there. Cost me $2.50 Canadian with free shipping. I mean, nothing too exciting or earth shattering. It's just a USB cable and it looked like it uh, would be a fairly thick one. So like so many things when I've uh, changed standards or are moving forward with, uh, with standards on things, I try to stock up on a variety of uh, bits and pieces just so that I'll have them when I need them. I mean, it's nothing too shocking. I probably could have bought it locally, but it would have been a lot more because, oh, USB-C is the new hotness. Next in, we have Transistor, it says. Interesting, the last one and this one were both shipped from the UK, even though I'm pretty confident that I haven't been buying things from UK sellers. So there's probably a, a drop shipping warehouse there that these Chinese sellers are using. Big says TIP31C TO220. So these are some sort of power transistor. Can't remember based off the part number. Let's just see if we can figure it out before we look it up. That should be fun. Actually, it won't be too hard using the correct tool for the job, which is of course the cheap transistor and other component tester. These things seem cheesy, but it really is a handy thing. These are NPN transistors. Okay, uh, just a just a higher current NPN transistor. 20 pieces, TIP 31C TO220. Uh, TIP 31 NPN power transistors. Got these from IC Market. It was not in the UK. They are in Shenzhen, just like everybody else. Uh, currently, they're selling for 438 with uh, 314 Canadian shipping. Which is uh, 349 American and 250. But as you can see, when I bought them, they were two dollars and ninety nine American and a buck fifty shipping. So they've gone up considerably since then. Well, let's see just what these guys are. They're not the most modern of part. They're probably uh, yeah, this data sheet's from 2006, but they're probably an older design than that. So they're capable of 100 volts across the base emitter or the collector emitter junction. And the important thing is the current handling, which is up to three amps collector current running or five amps peak, but peak is uh, short term. So the reason that I got these, you may remember a few months back, I was tinkering with an NPN transistor based constant current circuit. And at the time, the only uh, standard transistors, standard NPN transistors that I had kicking around were low power ones which are good for, what, 300 to 500 milliamps, something like that. So I figured if I wanted to drive a bigger LED with it, I should get some bigger uh, transistors. Next, Ian, what does this say? It's a plastic sheet. Oh boy, I haven't had something that lies and tells me it's a plastic sheet for a long time. Any bets? Any bets? It is an LED display. It is probably one of those LED voltmeters. And it looks like it is just judging by that, uh, what is that, uh, 33, 330 nanofarad capacitor that is probably a little voltmeter 
with a capacitor dropper on it. Further evidence is the power inputs are marked alive and neutral and they go straight to a full bridge rectifier. So that is probably one of the other ones that I ordered when I ordered those little round ones that I did the video on a, a week or two ago. Um, link up there as usual. Um, so well, we'll have to uh, play with that and see if it works any better than those ones do. 0.56 LED voltmeter, digital panel meter, AC 70 to 500 volts, DC 30 volts slash bunch of different voltages. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Bunch of things. Um, they claim it's good between 70 and 500 volts AC. I paid $1.88 US back when I bought it. However, the seller that I bought it from seems to have dropped off the face of the earth, so I can't link you to their listing of it. Fortunately, a whole bunch of other people sell it, so I will link you to this search. Meanwhile, to see what it actually is, I'll go into somebody else's listing for exactly the same thing and see what it has to say. So it looks like it's going to be not too much different than those other ones that I bought. They claim it runs from 70 volts and up, uh, plus or minus 1% error, 1 meg input impedance, 300 millisecond uh, display refresh, and dimensions, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's nice. It has a calibration pot on it i think i'd be wanting to use my insulated uh screwdrivers for that adjustment though but that puts it uh, a little bit above the other ones so maybe this one will be better maybe it'll work better at low voltages who knows we'll have to see i think we've got time for a quick janky test setup so the power bar is plugged into the output of the variac uh, these meters are both plugged into the power bar this guy says 115, that guy says 119. Let's crank this to the max, 144, 140. Uh, as usual, this one's not flickery to me, but it's probably being Charlie Plex the same as the other one is. I'm not gonna stick my fingers in there to look around, not yet. Uh, let's turn this down. Let's see where this thing gets too dim to see. Looks like it kicks in right around 50 volts, thereabouts. Uh, 52 on this one, 55 on that one. So that's pretty close to those other ones. And, I don't know, realistically, am I going to be powering stuff off the Variac below 50 volts? I don't know, maybe I will. Not sure. But I do know... That this fits perfectly in that little spot. So that might be better once I run the calibration on it. And there is that little calibration pot that they were talking about. So it shouldn't be that hard to calibrate it. So there's 10 pins going to the LED. So I'm assuming it is some sort of multiplexing. It might be Charlie plexing like the other ones, it might be something else. I'll have to tear this one down as well and find out what's going on. But I think I've got one more variation on this theme coming, so I'll just wait for that one before I tear into this one and uh, we'll maybe take them both apart together side by each just for the fun of it. Okay, the third thing in, this one says it is a development board. Sure, that's quite likely something that I might buy, but then again, that last one wasn't a plastic sheet, so... Ah, it's five of them. And they are this. They are 16-bit I squared C ADC plus PGA. Ah, analog to digital converter. Okay. Probably, I think. Uh, looks like uh, ADS1115. I expect that's probably the little chip there. Five pieces CJMCU dash ADS1115 16 bit ADC analog digital converter development board module. I got these from Hot Sale Shop 03, but I did not pay no 51 bucks for the five of them. Not even close. And I bought it with something else and I got free shipping. Wow, things have changed since back in October when I actually bought this. Holy hell. So, obviously, I'm not going to link you to that seller. 
owing to this search that finds you a bunch of other sellers with them but even then holy shit it looks like the prices have gone skyrocketing either that or i found a screaming accidental deal one or the other i'm not sure anyways caveat on tour back to the description it says that it'll run on anywhere from two to five and a half volts so it'll it'll work with your esp family or with your arduino family of uh microcontrollers really low current consumption programmable data rate internal oscillator it's got a pga a programmable gate array inside it which i assume is switching in and out various voltage dividers to allow it to measure the voltage there's a certain amount of bad translation and bullshit down here so i think we probably should go off and see if we can find a data sheet for this one ultra small low power 16-bit a to d converter with internal reference that one i got in the other mailbag is only an 8-bit uh this one's a 16-bit and the other one had a uh, an 8-bit wide data bus for an interface this one's got i squared c which i think will make it a lot more useful and it has either two differential inputs so it can measure the difference between those two inputs or you can run it as four single-ended so reference to ground inputs that could come in really handy for chips that don't have uh, a lot of analog inputs on them like again all of your uh, esp family of microcontrollers and since this thing will run on 3.3 volts i think that might be where i end up using them and the last thing in which as is tradition is the largest thing as well this looks like it came from a canadian seller uh richmond bc maybe let's just see what's in here aha it is a 4k action camera knowing me it is the cheapest knockoff 4k action camera i could find so in the box we have a bit of paperwork manual that's relatively thick and all in english well 24 pages of english manual that's surprising there's the camera itself, which looks like it's in a little waterproof clamshell case here. Yeah, it just drops out. Now that is, as I'm sure you can tell in the GoPro uh, form factor. Ooh, it's got a peelable screen protector on it. Yeah um <clears throat> okay so there's a little battery compartment on the bottom which i can't open with my lack of fingernails there we go so a little square battery drops into there um it's probably in here somewhere i'll deal with that later uh we have a usb a couple of different usbs both a micro and a mini by the looks of it we have an sd card slot there uh mode and power button there okay and presumably trigger mode uh, button there up and down buttons on the side okay um as is common with this type of camera Ooh, that fits on there really snug too that's good uh what was i saying as is common with this type of camera it's got that mount on it and the mounting happens only with the case on it which also has a little uh-huh uh-huh um if it was a gopro that would be gorilla glass on there i don't know whether it really is or not buttons have a little pass-throughs nice 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 okay let's dig further into the box oh batteries by the looks of it they claim to be 1050 milliamp hours each and then we've got what looks like an accessories box here dump all the wow that's a lot of swag obviously i paid for it it's not freebies but uh lens tissue replacement back for the case um lav mic <laughs> But that's not a 3.5 millimeter that's a two millimeter i think 2.37 or 2.4 millimeter whatever that is 
is that a standard? Well, it's a standard. It's not the most standard, but at least it's not some weird proprietary thing that they invented, I don't think. Uh, we have a replacement for this knob. We have some strappage. We have a different kind of mount thing. We have some zip ties. We have, looks like, little adhesive things and a safety little piece of cheap aircraft style cable we have what looks like a couple of tripod mount pieces uh, what is that oh that's a velcro wrist strap okay Ooh, a remote control um handlebar mount another mount a wider clippy mount thing uh, another type of tripod mount oh hey and that one just clamps onto the camera directly without the case. And then tripod mounts. All right. Uh, another kind of mount. Did I look at that one already? Um, wow. Okay. All kinds of different bits and pieces. And a USB cable. So I'm not 100% sure if how much lying they're doing about the 4K on there. Um... It shows a bunch of the different accessory things and stuff for mounting it on a bunch of things. Up to 64 gig uh, SD card. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to go through this. Uh, does it deserve its own review and independent video? Just to see if it is what it claims to be. See if it's you know any good at all or if it's complete junk. I don't know. Uh, comment down below. Anyways, let's go and see what I paid for this and where I got it from and all that good stuff. Ampark 4K UHD action camera, Wi-Fi 20 megapixel sports cam, camcorder plus microphone. Wi-Fi? Oh, I didn't notice that on the box. Got this from Dodot Tomorrow, Dodot Tomorrow, Dodo Tomorrow, something like that. Um, and they are actually a Canadian seller from Vancouver. Neat. Currently they're selling it for $56.99, but as with everything, this listing has been updated, but you can see the item that you purchased, which was fifty-one twenty-nine. So it's gone up by about six bucks. What does it have for modes? It has thirty FPS four K, thirty FPS ten eighty, sixty FPS ten eighty, or thirty frames. What? Four K thirty FPS? Oh, two point seven K thirty, ten eighty sixty, or ten eighty thirty. Okay. Uh, can do time lapse, loop recording, slow mo, all that good stuff. Sure. It's, uh, with the case, it's good to 40 meters underwater. Sure, whatever. Okay. Uh, SD cards up to 64 gigs. That said, that manual too. That's a little small for recording 4K 30 or 1080 60, isn't it? Yeah, charger not included. You can charge the battery directly in the camera. Damn it. Oh, well, that's, uh, that's something. And they're just lithium ion batteries. I got lots of lithium ion battery charges around here. I just have to come up with uh, some, a mechanical solution, I guess. Oh, it says it can do 20 megapixel photos. Okay, sure. Uh, it has anti shaking, which I assume is stability. It has remote control and Wi Fi. That could come in handy. External microphone, sure. A bunch of accessories. Yeah, yeah, we've seen all that. 170 degree HD wide angle lens. So, yeah, that is. A lot wider than a standard camera lens, but that is pretty common for all of these action cameras. Well, that was an interesting mailbag, as often is the case, from the most mundane to something kind of exciting, like this little camera here. Um, let's quickly go over shipping times. These transistors took 19 days. This LED voltmeter here took 32 days to get here. The USB-C cable took 40 days. These five analog to digital converters took 20 days and the camera, because it came from BC within Canada only took 14 days. It's recording just straight into the, the uh, computer on USB. It's acting like a webcam. And I think that looks pretty good. That's a pretty good view of the workbench. Hello. Actually the legs, not bad either. Even running through the USB, that's pretty much live. Hmm. No, nobody wants to see me do a live stream. Get those ideas out of your mind. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> thanks everybody for watching. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members for kicking a few bucks into the kitty and letting me uh, keep these mailbags rolling in and 
also letting me keep my uh, beer fridge full and letting me try these interesting beers all the time. I do appreciate that. Uh, any questions or comments, as usual, down in the comment section. If you want to see me do a deeper dive on any of this stuff, and I'm probably going to do it anyways, I'm, I'm going to spend some time with the camera. I, when I get another uh, version of that in, I'm probably going to do a deeper dive on those two. Um, I probably will play with these. Uh, well, I'm, I'm sure I will play with them, but uh, if you want to see me do it on camera, let me know. And this, like I said, is for messing around with higher current, uh, brighter LEDs. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will talk to you later.